Hey everyone, what's up? It's Kahoob here. Welcome to Bitcoin for Beginners Part 4. Today we're going to be going over how to set up Sparrow Wallet's Hot Wallet option. So Sparrow Wallet is an open source Bitcoin only software wallet. It has many use cases and in our situation we will be using it as our main Bitcoin wallet. Before I get into how to set it up, I want to talk about the pros and cons of a hot wallet. There are two different types of Bitcoin wallets that most people talk about. Those would be cold wallets, also known as cold storage, and then also hot wallets. So hot wallets are usually free and they could be an app on your phone or software you install onto your computer. Sometimes it will be a mixture of both since the company who created the wallet may have a desktop version as well as a mobile version. So I'm going to be telling you the negatives of a hot wallet as it is very important to know this stuff before deciding if a hot wallet is a good choice for you to use. A hot wallet is always online and the private keys are generated online. This means that if someone hacks into your computer or phone and opens up your wallet, they can steal all of your Bitcoin. Even if you put a password on your wallet, the Bitcoin can still easily be stolen. So out of all types of Bitcoin wallets, generally hot wallets are the least protected. I mean, there's also like paper wallets, but I'm not going to get into all that. Um, and I personally would not hold a lot of Bitcoin with a hot wallet as the security on them is just, they're just not... Uh, the security just isn't good enough to where I would feel comfortable storing a large amount of Bitcoin on one. So my main reason for saying that hot wallets are one of the least protected types of wallets is because if your wallet is online all day, hackers potentially have constant access to try and hack and breach your wallet. So after hearing all that, you may wonder why someone would want to use a hot wallet when they can just use a cold storage wallet and be way more protected. Well, there are a few reasons why someone may use a hot wallet. These reasons could include that the person doesn't own very much Bitcoin and so they do not want to spend over $150 on a hardware wallet if it's only to protect $50 to $100 worth of Bitcoin. Another reason may be because they just cannot afford a hardware wallet, but they do want to buy Bitcoin uh, and, you know, hold Bitcoin. But um, And then maybe like once they stack up enough Bitcoin, they will uh, make the decision to buy a hardware wallet to protect their Bitcoin then. One other reason could simply be that they want to test around with a free Bitcoin wallet before making up the big decision uh, on buying a specific hardware wallet, as you definitely wouldn't want to rush into the purchase of buying one and you end up buying a really bad hardware wallet to where you will just, you know, end up needing to buy another one anyways. That would just be a waste of money. So, personally, I highly recommend getting a cold storage wallet instead because a cold storage hardware wallet has the private keys generated offline and no hacker on the internet can access your Bitcoin unless your hardware wallet is connected to the internet. And there are some uh, really good fully air-gapped hardware wallets out there on the market where you know your Bitcoin will never touch the internet in any way. But if you insist on using a software wallet, then I am now going to show you how to set up a hot wallet with Sparrow. Now, keep in mind, even you can also use Sparrow while using cold storage. For example, I have a cold card and I still use Sparrow, but that's because I exported the XPUB uh, onto Sparrow. So it's a watch only wallet, meaning it doesn't have the private keys on it. But that's for a future video and I'm not going to be getting, going into that right now. So if that kind of confused you of what all that meant, then don't worry. You won't need to know. Um, okay, at least for now. But anyways... So the first thing you will want to do is go to Sparrow, make sure you open it up, the Sparrow wallet, as you should already have it downloaded and installed. Then go to File and then New Wallet. So that'll be File, New Wallet, and then enter any name you want. This name literally does not matter. It's whatever you want to name it. So I guess something that you'll know. I'll just do Tutorial. Once you do that, this should pop up and look something like this. You'll then click new or imported software wallet, which will be right here on the down the, on the key stores and the settings right here. This screen should then pop up and then you'll want to click use 24 words right next to the mnemonic words BIP39. If you do not see the 24 word option, then click the little down arrow right here so you can then see it and click use 24 words as there's multiple options. 24 is just the one that I think is best. Um, you can look, look more into that if you prefer before deciding, but I'm just gonna go with 24 words. All right, next you'll want to click generate new on the bottom left, which is right here, below use passphrase. 
generate new. All right. So as a warning, just, you know, as you saw before, I entered all that in and clicking generate new, you saw that there was empty fields and it let me enter text into them. So as a warning, do not try entering in your own seed phrase, which is that's what this is. Your 24 words are, is your seed phrase. Uh, but yeah, do not try making your own and writing in your own. Uh, now, there is a list of words that are you can only use. So it's not like you can literally write anything. But uh, even out of the words you are able to use, there's like 2,048 words possible in a seed phrase you can make your own. But uh, just do not do that no matter what because uh, you will lose your Bitcoin. Uh, your Bitcoin literally will be stolen if you make it yourself because it's, yeah, just don't. Your Bitcoin will be stolen and that's for real. Okay, anyways, now you'll simply just click generate uh, new, as I said, which you should already have. And now it should say valid checksum. And just make sure to not show anyone the seed phrase that you just generated, because if you do, anyone can steal your Bitcoin. So even though I know, I, you know, I just said, if you make your own, it'll get stolen. And now I'm saying, don't show anyone this because it can be stolen. Well, yeah, just keep those both in mind. Uh, do not show anyone these 24 words. And you may be wondering, well, I'm doing it right now uh, in this video. So how does that make any sense? Thing is, I'm not going to actually use this wallet at all. This wallet will never be used ever uh, as I'm exposing the seed phrase. And if I were to put Bitcoin in it, it'd be stolen immediately because I have exposed basically access to this wallet to take any Bitcoin out of it. So just know that uh, no matter how good of security you have, anyone can steal your Bitcoin if they know your seed phrase. So your seed phrase is basically the main master password key. So never share your seed phrase with anyone, no matter what. Oh, shit. Okay. Sorry about that. And uh, make sure to just never give out even a single word out of your seed phrase out to anyone. And uh, don't give it to me, even if I ask, and not to anyone or any exchange or anyone. No customer support or anyone will ever ask for it if they're legit. Uh, if anyone ever asks for it and you think they're customer support or anything, then it's a scam, not real. Uh, on another note, Sparrow does give you the option to use a passphrase, which is pretty cool. A passphrase is different than a seed phrase. But um, I will save that topic for another video where I'll go more in depth about passphrases. For now, you will write down your 24 word seed phrase on a piece of paper and then click confirm backup. And then once you've done that, you'll click re-enter words and then this is where you'll re-enter the words and then you'll click create key store. So I'm gonna do confirm backup as I said. It asks you have these 24 words been written down and the next step you will need to re-enter them. Uh, so then you'll click re-enter words and you'll re-enter them. So I'm going to pause the video right now and write down these words so I can follow along and do it with you guys. All right, I have written them down. I'll click confirm backup, re-enter the words. And now that's exactly what I'll do. So I'm going to pause the video as well here, but I'm going to re-enter them right now and then I'll play the video again. All right, I am almost done. And as you can see, it does give you the options um, of what the words are. And it's pretty much, you can't really enter it in wrong. Like you can't do an extra E by accident or anything like that, or whatever. But let me just finish this real quick. As you can see, I almost made a mistake there, but it didn't let me enter it. Okay, create key store. Now you should see it this screen. All right, before continuing, just keep in mind that if your computer crashes and you need to buy a new one, you will not be able to get back access to your Bitcoin unless you have your 24 words. Without your 24 words, it will be impossible to ever restore your Bitcoin. If you were to uninstall Sparrow and reinstall it, that will also lose your Bitcoin. And you should always make sure to have your 24 words written down safely somewhere. Also, for security reasons, it is best to never write down your seed phrase online anywhere. I recommend for people to only ever have their 24 words written down in person using a metal seed phrase protector, which I will have a list of them down in the description for you to check out as pen and paper can easily get burned up in a fire. And also if like a flood happens, it will also be destroyed too. So I would just not trust the paper long term. Make sure to never write down your seed phrase into a text file or Google Docs or just anywhere online. Do not take a picture of it. Do not even do this temporarily. Do not print it out or anything. Keep in mind that there is no Bitcoin CEO or any official Bitcoin customer support email or phone number to contact or anything. 
I will have a separate video going over metal seed phrases, but they're but they're you know they're pretty straightforward, as you'll see um, once you look at them. Uh, so yeah, but I will have a link down in the description of a list of them for you to check out, and as well, it will. I'll also have another uh, link that shows. Well, the same link will also show their ratings on how well each one works. So it's going to be a list of a ton that also have ratings. So it's going to be kind of cool. You can check out for yourself. And okay, so now to continue. This is the next step you'll want to do once you at this screen is to click import key store. All right. So once you clicked import key store, you should see right here, it should say software wallet, the type, and it should show the XPUB and the ZPUB and all that. And then it should be good. And you can click view seed just to make sure that's the one. Got no passphrase or anything like that. Now you have it on. Then down in the bottom right, you can click apply. And then this is where you can add a password to the wallet or you can leave empty for no password. So you may wonder, well, actually, um, at this point, you will want to write a password as you have your seed phrase in here. So if someone was to hack your computer, um, they if they get into your Sparrow, then because you have your... Uh, 24 word seed phrase on here and it's imported on here and it's in here and everything online uh they can steal your bitcoin so you will want to make a really strong password if you're doing it this way now if you were using a cold storage wallet while using sparrow a password is not really necessary other than for privacy reasons but in this situation you definitely 100 percent will want to make a password because you have your seed phrase on sparrow online um so yeah, it, it, this is basically protection from anyone stealing your Bitcoin. If someone was to hack your computer, gain access and open up Sparrow, if you don't have a password on it, then they can easily withdraw Bitcoin from the wallet to whatever wallet they want. So this is where you will want to create a password, as I'm saying multiple times over and over, just because it's very important that you do, which is why I'm repeating it so much. Um, but yeah, so create a password, make sure it's really strong. I'd recommend doing a password that... Uh, you've never used before and maybe write that down in person and make sure that's protected and safe somewhere. Um, even if you do forget the password on here though, do not worry as long as you have written down your 24 word seed phrase, that's the most important. So if you don't remember your password, that doesn't mean you're out of your Bitcoin because you have your 24 word seed phrase, you're fine. Um, so yeah, just, I highly recommend you do not use a password you've ever used before. Make sure it's something completely new and make sure it's a strong password and all of that. And um, yeah, just do that and you should be fine. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. I've created my password. I'll hit set password. And now we're in. So now is the fun part where we can go to transactions, go to send, receive addresses, UTXOs, the change addresses, the receive addresses that you have connected with your, uh, master public key. And uh, yeah, now you're fully in. So you have now officially set up your Sparrow hot wallet. So congratulations, you now have a Bitcoin hot wallet and also a Bitcoin node set up. So you should have this running as well. And you should also have them connected together as well, meaning you should already have uh, Bitcoin Core downloaded, installed, synced to the blockchain, as well as Sparrow downloaded, installed, and also having uh, Bitcoin Core connected to Sparrow so it should be fully connected and running now and then you now after this video you should have a hot wallet officially set up and running so everything should be good to go and working um, so but if these steps didn't work for you then please join my telegram group down in the description and you can ask me any questions you want you can also leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can uh, I'm just, I would just be a lot more active in my Telegram. I can also send screenshots and stuff like that. So it might, might be easier to help you out quicker. But you can leave comments down below as well if you would like instead. Um, but you can also join this one Bitcoin Discord group that I am a part of where there's many active members who know a lot about Bitcoin and they may be able to help you troubleshoot if I'm not able to help you or if I don't know the answer or if I'm just not quick enough to get to you. But uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to be alerted for future episodes of Bitcoin for Beginners, where I will go over the metal seed phrase protectors, cold storage wallets, and so on. So uh, 
Hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. See you guys later.